everybody! Hello, hello, hello! Hello to you, hello to me, hello to you if I'm on your TV. And I song for you, good morning, good afternoon. I'm so used to saying good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to the Shed School with me, Mr. Bates. I hope you are doing well. Goodness me, it is cold! Ooh, it is very cold. Did you have fun in the snow this weekend? It was awesome, wasn't it? There is still so much snow outside. Uh, I'm not going to lie, it is rather chilly, chilly, chilly in here today. It's a lot of chilly, a lot of chilly. Uh, it is a little, a little cold in the shed. I've had my heater on, but uh, I've turned it off now because otherwise it gets too loud. I don't want to annoy you. I wouldn't want to annoy you at home. How are you? Have you had a good week? Goodness me, I can't believe we've had a week since our last live lesson. What's been going on? I'm sure you've all been doing some fantastic learning with your school. I would love to see what you guys have been up to. Uh, do share it with me here at The Shed. You know that you can share any of your work with me at The Shed. You can do that via Facebook, via Instagram, via Twitter, however you feel fit. Um, but don't forget, before you do share any of that work, click that subscribe button. Do subscribe to our lessons. Like I said, we're here every Monday. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! At one o'clock. Oh yeah. Right, uh, let's get cracking with today's lesson then. So, we are going to be doing some Key Stage 1 English, Key Stage 2 English, just extending it a little bit further. We're thinking about our creative writing. If you joined us for the last few weeks, do have that work out next to you. It will really help you today. It will really help you. Oh, do not knock my iPad off. It will help you today. So do have a little look. Let's do have a little look through it. Um, I'm sure it will help you. Ian and Kashana here from Bristol. Hi, you guys. How you doing? Nice to see you all. Nice to see you. Now, do let me know if you're here. Drop me a comment me a message in the comments box. And you can always hit that like button to see your name on the screen. That's right. Just for you. Your name on the screen. Lottie's here as well. Good afternoon, Lottie. Lovely to see familiar faces back in the shed. So nice that you're here. So nice. Right. Shall we get started with today's lesson then? Let's give it a go. Remember, all you need at home is a piece of paper and a pen. That's it. That's all you ever need. That's all you ever need in the shed. Piece of paper and a pen and a brain. You might need a brain, but you know what? We can work that brain. Give it a massage. Ooh, ooh, thinking caps are on. Ready to go. Uh, what's this? Hector. Hector played in the snow today. And Abigail. Hector and Abigail, you are so lucky. I am going to go play in the snow after this lesson today. Well, I've got a bit of work to do, but then I'm going to go play in the snow. You're going to love it. And Tony is here. Fantastic. Lovely to see you all, guys. Remember, like I said, do click that like and share button to see your name on the screen. Right, should we get started with today's lesson? I think we should. I think we shall. Ah, here we go. Ready to go. There he is. A little slidey shower. All ready to slide in. Mmm. I need some water. I need to drink, gotta keep drinking that water. Gotta keep drinking it. Right, let's get started with today's lesson then. So, today, coming up in today's show, we have got some riddles. We're going to be doing some riddles first, just to warm up our minds and our brains, just to get us ticking over. Some little riddlies, some little riddlers, the little riddler. Uh, and then we've got our main activity, which we're going to be looking at some sentence starters today. How do we start a sentence? Sometimes that can be the hardest thing when we're writing, is starting sentences. So we're going to be looking at some different ways of kick-starting our sentences today. Kick it, pure, kick it, pure, pure, kick it, starter, kick start that sentence. And then, of course, our plenary, we're going to be looking over that, learning what we've done today, just to cement it in our brains. Hmm, I think it's cemented, but I'm not too sure. Well, let's have a little look. Let's keep going. Oh, Mr. Monkey, of course. He'll be here later as well. Like I said, don't forget to share and subscribe. Uh, do click that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube and on Facebook. And obviously, you can share any thoughts or ideas with us here at The Shed School via Facebook, via Twitter, and via Instagram. We love hearing from you. I keep saying we, but I mean me, because it's just me. <laughs> so I love hearing from you and the work you've been going on. So fantastic. Please do share, share, share. Right, let's do a little riddle. Let's kickstart our little minds. Let's kickstart our little brains. And you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something. I'm going to do something a bit crazy here. Woo! -hoo! 
I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer. There we go. You can see me a bit better now. You can see my big fat head. Hey, big fat head. There we go. <laughs> Is that too close? No, we we'll keep going. No, I, don't, I like it the other way. I like it the other way. I like it the other way. I like it like that. It's too much in my head. Too many chins. Too many chins. So, what the question I have for you today. What question can you never answer yes to? <gasps> it's a riddle. It's a first riddle to kick us off. Right, you ready? What questions... What question can you never answer yes to? Hmm. Hmm. Daniel and Liam in Claygate. Just down the road. Love Claygate. Uh, what question can you never answer yes to? It's a riddle. What do we think? What do we think our answer could be? What question can you never answer yes to? Um, would you like to jump off this cliff? I'd never answer yes to that. <laughs> I don't think that's it though. Um, what question can you never answer yes to? Um, do you smell? That, I could never answer yes to that because I would never go, oh yes, oh, it's actually, actually, poor, poor, yeah, I do actually, I do a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think at home? Do let me know in the comments box. What question can you never answer yes to? Remember, this is a riddle. It's for us to get our brains warmed up. It's always really good to do a little exercise to warm up our brains before we do a bit of main learning. It's always good. It just kind of gets us warmed up a little bit. It gets us ready for the day. Ready for the day. I am Robot Mr. Bates and I am ready for the day. <laughs> right, what do you think? What question should, should, I, should I tell you? Should we find out? Let's find out, shall we? Shall we? Let's have a look. Of course! The question is, are you asleep? Because <laughs> you can't answer it, can you? Because you're asleep. You can't answer it because you're asleep. Good one, that. Good one, that. What answer can you never answer yes to? Are you asleep? You can't answer yes because you'll be asleep. Oh, that's a good one. I'm going to save that one. Do that one on your mums and dads later. Obviously not when they're asleep, but you, you get my joke. Because <laughs> they wouldn't be an answer, would they? Awesome, next one. Okay, you ready? Next one. You can't keep this until you have given it. What is it? Oh, that's tricky. I'll read that again. You can't keep this until you have given it. What is it? That is tricky, Maliki. Right, you can't keep this until you've given it. What do you think that could be at home? Let me know in the comments box. Uh, you can't keep this until you have given it. Can't keep it until you've given it a key? If I give someone a key? No, I can't keep it until, until you've given it. Uh, I don't know on that, that is tricky. Mr. Bates made these hard today, hasn't he? They're always so good, but they're good for our brains. They're good for our minds. Get ourselves warmed up. You can't keep this until you've given it. What do you think at home? Let me know. Um, uh, oh, right. Let me have a think. You can't keep this until you've given it. Should I tell you? Should I find out? Oh, oh, go, oh, oh, oh. Esther's got one. Esther, friendship and love. Oh, Hector and Abigail. I love those. Uh, friendship and love. Yeah, maybe it's friendship and love. You can't keep this until you've given it. Friendship. Maybe it's friendship. Yeah, you can't keep friendship until you've given it. Maybe, or you can't give love until, you can't keep love until you've given it away. It's quite a nice, I can't say the word, it's quite a nice thought, isn't it? And that you kind of, you've got to have love to then give it away. You can't, you can't keep love until you've given it to somebody else. I quite like that, because we do love everybody, it's really nice that. Um, I really like that, thanks uh, Hector and Abigail. Um, I don't know, should I, should I tell you? I don't want to, I like, uh, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Ready? It is a promise. <gasps> of course, a promise. Yeah, of course, you can't keep a promise until you've given it away. So if you keep keep a promise and then you've given it away, you've broken your promise, haven't you? Until you've given it away. Oh, that is sneaky. Oh, that's a, again, a good one. Good one to keep in there. For mums and dads later on, they love those ones. Or if you're on a Zoom chat with your friends, tell them to go, hey, I learned a riddle today. Then tell them one of the uh, Mr. Bates riddles. Right, you ready? Got another one for you. Got a few more today, and then we're going to start our main teaching. Right, what is correct to say? The yolk of the egg are white, or the yolk of the egg is white. Ooh. Now, an egg, you know, when you crack it open, there's, there's like the white bit and the yellow bit, isn't there? 
Yeah. So what is correct to say? The yolk of the egg are what? Uh, the yolk of the egg are white, or the yolk of the egg is white? Oh, that's hard. That what is the right way of saying that? The yolk of the egg are white. That doesn't sound right. The yolk of the egg is white. That sounds more like it, doesn't it? But again, remember, this is a riddle. It's not going to be as easy as that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but that's what I mean. It's not going to be as easy as that. But which is correct to say? Which one do you think it is? Which is correct to say? Ooh. Um, uh, which could be right? Uh, I don't know on this one. This is tricky. This is, again, these are some real brain teasers. It's teasing my brain. Which is correct to say the yolk of the egg are white? Or the white of the egg, oh, sorry, or the, oh, I can't even say it. God. Or the yolk of the egg is white. Again, that's it's a bit of a tongue twister, that. Well, thinking about it in, in English, in English, the yolk of the egg is white. That sounds right, doesn't it? The yolk of the egg is white. Which one of these correct? Well, I'm going to I'm gonna guess that one. What do you think at home? Let me know. Do you think it's going to be that one? Uh, uh, Hector and Abigail, what does it? Oh, hang on. They've pointed out something very clever here. They have pointed out something very clever. And I think you've got it there. I think you might have got it. Should we find out? Neither! The yolk is yellow! <laughs> hey, of course! The yolk is yellow, not white, of course. So neither of those are right because it's the yolk that is yellow. The, that, the white bit is called something else. That's like the main bit of the egg, but the yolky bit is the yellow bit. Oliver's here. Good afternoon, Oliver. Nice to see you, buddy. Nice to join us. Thanks, Oliver. Super, super stuff. We're just doing some riddles. Right, uh, next one then. What kind of coat can only be put on wet? Ooh. What kind of coat can only be put on wet? What do you think? Wet coat? I don't want to put a wet coat on. That's obvious. Nobody wants a wet coat. I certainly don't want a wet coat. There's nothing worse than a wet coat. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't like that one. What kind of coat can only be put But what kind of coat? Uh, he, oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. These are quite tricky, aren't they? I don't know. What do you think at home? Let me know in the comments box. What kind of coat can only be put on wet? Hmm. Uh, what do you think? A raincoat? I like that idea. Well done. I like a raincoat because a raincoat, it's got rain on it. A raincoat. But I suppose a raincoat isn't wet when we put it on, is it? Something that we put on that's wet. There's a coat, a towel. I love that. I love that idea, Lottie. Maybe it's a towel. Maybe. Oh, no. Oh, oh. My brain. My brain is like, on fire. It's like burning up. Wet soot. Oh, it could be wet soot. I tell you what, should we find out? Wet soot. Oh, I don't know. I can't. I tell you what, let's find out. Let's find out together. You ready? Let's find out together. It's a coat of paint. Yes. Well done, Hector and Abigail. Yes, of course, it is a coat of paint. When you put on paint on the walls, it's called a coat of paint. Oh, you put on the first coat and then the second coat. It's not literally, you're not we're literally putting coats on. <laughs> Very good. Well done, well done, guys, well done. Right, I've got one more for you. One more, okay, one more before we move on to our main task today. And it says this. Jack and Jill are lying on the floor inside the house, dead. <gasps> Jack and Jill are lying on the floor inside the house, dead. Oh no! Oh dear, Jack and Jill, those crazies. They died from lack of water. Oh. They, they, they went up the hill, they then. Oh no. There is shattered glass next to them, which means there's smashed glass next to them. How did they die? Oh no, I don't know. It's quite sounds quite bad, this one. So right, let me read it to you again. Okay, Jack and Jill are lying on the floor inside the house and they are dead. RIP, Jack and Jill. They died from lack of water. 
Oh, because they go up the hill to get the water, don't they? Wack fell down, broke us down, Jill came down the hill after. Uh, there is shattered glass next to them, which means a smashed glass on the floor. Oh, dangerous. Don't go in there. How did they die? Oh, Jack and Jill, you crazies. What are you doing with glass? I mean, what are you do? Like, what? And they die because of lack of water. I wonder if you can work out what this riddle is. Remember, these riddles are kind of like little brain teasers. Little brainy teasers. A big flood. I love that. I love the idea of that. It was a big flood. It could have been a big flood. Could have been a big flood in a big glass boat. Like the Ark. Yes, could have been. But it's not quite right. Well done. I wonder what other ideas you've got. Let me know. Uh, big... There's Jack and Jill and they're on the floor. And they... Lack of water and the shattered glass. Hmm... Maybe, uh, I don't want to give you too much. I don't want to give you too much. Should we find out what it is? Let's find out what it is. Guys, you're doing fantastically today. Let's find out what it is. If you want to uh, guess and have a little bit longer, do feel free to pause this video. Um, and obviously you're more than welcome to play these back to your mums and dads later on today to get their brains going and give them a little bit of a riddle. Let's find out what the answer is today. It is Jack and Jill are goldfish. Of course! <laughs> they're goldfish! Jack and Jill, they're not from the nursery rhyme. They're, they're goldfish in a fish tank that's probably fallen on the floor. Of course, the glass is smashed and unfortunately they passed away because of lack of water because fish need water to breathe. Oh, of course. What a sad story. What a sad story. Um, how lovely, though. What a brilliant brain teaser. And what a lovely riddle. Excellent. Well done, everybody. Give yourself a big marshmallow clap. <laughs> brilliant stuff. Excellent, everybody. That was a really good warm-up. I really like that one. That was really good. Well done, well done, well done. Right. Let's move on to the main bulk of our lesson now. Today, we are looking at types of sentences. We're going to look at types of sentences. There's lots of different types as well as we're going to be looking at sentence starters. But first of all, let's summarise what different types of sentences we use when we're writing. Now, some of these you might use all the time. Some of them you might only use some of the time. But these are all different types of sentences. So, for example, statements. These are a type of sentence. Statements are sentences which tell you a fact, opinion or idea. Okay? For example, a rainbow has seven colours. They are, they are beautiful to look at. These are all facts, they're statements. Okay? It's a type of sentence we tend to use when we're, using, when we're writing non-fiction, when we're writing something that is a fact about something. If I was writing about this shed, I would write, it is made of bricks and it is very cold. Uh, but that is a statement. That is a type of sentence that we sometimes use. Number two, we can also write in questions. It's always really good to write a question. Um, particularly in our writing, when we're asking, when we're characters asking them a, a question, hey, which way should we go, guys? Hey, I don't know, guys, which way should we go? It's a really good thing to do, is to ask questions in our writing. Sometimes characters do that. Uh, but questions are sentences that ask you something. Ask the reader something, something that they uh, might have to do or might have to answer. Uh, they usually end with a question mark. <laughs> Not usually. Most questions end with a question mark. Fact of Monday. You've got to put a question mark in there. So, for example, what did you have for dinner? It is a question. It is a sentence. It is a sentence question. A question sentence. Another good way that we can add in things into our writing. Commands! Number three, commands! Yeah, I command you! They are often urgent or angry. And uh, they can be very short and contain an imperative verb! Now, if you're not sure what an imperative verb is, if I said that wrong, I probably said it wrong, uh, do check out the videos from last summer. Uh, do go onto YouTube, all the videos up on there. I talk a lot about verbs on there. Uh, they're all up on there. Do have a little look through. Commands! Imperative verbs are also known as bossy verbs. They are the, the bossy ones. They tell you people what to do. The bossy verb, help me, stop that, go there, jump. That's an imperative verb. I think that's imperative. I keep saying it wrong. Dyslexic, hard brain. Jump. Uh, 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 uh. 
but, stop, help me. These are again commands that we can add into our writing to tell either characters or to tell statements about what's going on. Commands, go there, stop that, run here, jump. You find instruction, like lots of things that are instructional, like uh, recipes uh, have instructional or bossy verbs. Take the bottle of milk, mix the flour and water, throw the flowery mess into your brother's face. No, don't do that, don't do that, I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> four, exclamations, to exclaim things, which I do quite a lot, I'm exclaiming. Um, an exclamation is used when someone is surprised. <gasps> it always starts with how or what and contains a noun and a verb. A noun is a noun, like a thing, a bottle, a, bo a, bo a noun. And a verb. What big feet you have. What big feet you have. Got an exclamation mark there. <gasps> As in a, wow, what a big feet you have. You can use an exclamation mark at the end. And they're exclamations. Again, really lovely to use in our writing. Same as questions, commands, statements. Exclamations. The boy didn't know where to go. It's exclaiming it. So another great thing to use in our sentences. Right, now it's your turn. Can you make a sentence using some of these? I would like you, on your piece of paper, on your whiteboard, uh, yeah, piece of paper or whiteboard. I was going to say something else then, but no, piece of paper or whiteboard. I'd like you to see if you can make a sentence. If you want to, you can do this verbally. I would like you to use all of a sudden in a sentence. Can you at home use all of a sudden in a sentence? We're now thinking about those sentence starters. Great ways that we can start a sentence. All of a sudden. All of a sudden. How can we use that in a sentence? How can we use it? Well, it's a sentence starter, isn't it? So it's got to go at the start. Start of a sentence. So uh, I'm going to think now. Um, all of a sudden, the door swung open. All of a sudden, the bottle fell from his hand. <laughs> uh, it's quite a good one, all of a sudden, isn't it? Because it, ev it evokes feelings of, ooh, something's about to happen. It kind of gives the reader some little, like, a bit of information about what's going to happen, what's around the corner. All of a sudden, one went bang! <laughs> I wonder what sentences you're coming up with at home. Feel free to write them down your piece of paper or your whiteboard. Or if you've got a family member there, or a dog, or a cat, or a dog, or I said dog, or a bear, you could talk to them. Tell them, tell them a juicy sentence using all of a sudden. Okay? Lovely. Excellent stuff. Well done. Right, how about this one? If you've done that one, give this one a go. Alright, give this one a go. One morning. What could your sentence be? Using that one morning, what could your sentence be? One morning. Again, another great way to start a sentence is placing it in time. As in, is it in the morning? Is it in the afternoon? Is it in the evening? Is it night time? Is it breakfast time? Is it dinner time? These are great things that we can add into our sentences to make our sentences more exciting. One morning, I saw a tiny pig. Maybe. I don't know. What's your sentence going to be? Let me know. Feel free to type your comments, uh, your, your <laughs> sentence in the comments box. Let me know. I want to know what your sentences are. One morning, I farted. No, <laughs> sounds a bit short, uh, but it could happen. It does happen in the mornings. It, it does, just does. Uh, one morning, I looked down and saw my body was made of feathers. <gasps> I'd become a bird overnight. Ah, ah, awesome. Again, these are fantastic ways to start our sentences. It's getting you to think about what well, right. Not just, I woke up, I had fun, it was great, I like ice cream, it tastes nice. Ah. Let's make these sentences more exciting, okay? One morning, I awoke from a deep sleep to find my legs were made of jelly. I don't know. You can come up with whatever sentence you like. Uh, oh, here we go. All of the, uh, back to all of a sudden. Abigail, lovely. All of a sudden, a cake appeared. I absolutely love that. I wish that happened. 
Don't you wish that happened? All of a sudden, the cake appeared. All of a sudden, bang, cake appeared. Brilliant. That's what I love. Abigail, fantastic stuff. Love that idea. Yeah, it really lovely. It gives that, it just gives the sentence a nice frame, a nice structure. It places it. You could have just said, a cake appears. Uh, I saw a cake. Uh, cake. Oh, make it fun, make it exciting. And these are great ways to make our writing more exciting. So, one morning. Give that one a go. Uh, I've got another one for you. Got a couple, another one for you. After a while. After a while. A while means a short period of time. After a while. After a while. Great way to describe time passing. That's a lovely thing in writing when we can describe what happened. So you can say one morning. Uh, one morning. Oh, I'm going to take. I'm going to take Lottie's example here. Here we go. One morning, the sun was brighter than ever. Love that. You could then start your next sentence saying, "After a while, the sun turned a bluish green. This was not a normal day." <gasps> oh. Okay. No. Within two sentences, you got me gripped. You got me excited. I want to read more. I want to know what's going to happen. What is going on here? Okay? So these are really great ways to think about how we can place these in sentences. Okay? After a while. I'm going to move through these ones now because I think you've got the gist of it now. If you want to go back and go over these ones nice and slowly, feel free. The, like I said, the video will be posted on YouTube and on Facebook after the lesson. You can go back through and pause these at your own time. Okay? Before long. Another great way to start our sentences. Before long, something happened. So before long, the sun, which was brighter than ever, fell into my pocket. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> my pants are on fire. Maybe. I don't know. But let's, again, it's getting us to think about how we can start our sentences. Making it exciting for you and, and, and for the reader. What else have we got? At last. Oh, great way to start writing things up towards the end of the sentence. Ah, at last, the sun came down and we all went to bed. Ah, uh, after the sun, after, after, after the last, I'm getting my tongue's right tied now. After, at last, I don't know what I'm saying after. At last, the sun became a tiny chocolate orange that I popped into my mouth. And gobbled up. Nom, 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 nom. Excellent. Uh, what have we got here? What other examples have we got here? Uh, after a while, my apple turned blue. <laughs> I love that. Have a go, I love that. After a while, my apple turned blue. Imagine that. What a great way to put in our sentence there. After, great, after a while, my apple turned blue. Awesome. You got me interested, excited. Lovely stuff. Excellent. Right. Um, so, today, your task. I would like you to have a little look at what you created last week and the week before. If you did miss the lessons, it doesn't matter at all. What we're doing is creating stories about a magic item, a magic noun. I came up with the idea of having uh, a magic telephone in my house, and I wrote some adjectives to describe that telephone. And then last week I thought about the setting in which I could go to. So I think why well, I came up with a few, but the Lego one was quite cool. The, the, the chocolate land I quite liked, but I also quite liked the setting of underneath the sea. So I'm going to keep hold of that one. Again, you can refer back to these sheets that you created last week. They're kind of word maps, aren't they, that you can pick upon. And you can choose, right, well, this is my item that I wrote about, and I would like to travel to uh, the moon. I'd like to travel to the moon. Or you might go, oh, actually, I want to travel to a land where everything's made of unicorns. It's up to you. I don't mind. But today, I'd like you to write three sentences about a magic story using starters of your choice. So, three sentences using three starters. What does that mean, Mr. Bates? Let me show you. Well, the stars on here give an example of some starters you could use. At last, finally, nearly first, in a far-off land, next, even though another, these are all great words or phrases we can use at the beginning of our sentences to make our sentences exciting. Obviously, we've touched on some as well before. Um, after that, uh, uh, long after, uh, in the morning, you could have one of those. Oh, I love that. At last I had chocolate. I, I know that feeling. At last I had chocolate. Um, so, 
use some starters, use a range of starters, use different ones, use exciting ones. And I'd like you to create three sentences that could fit into your story about this magical land that you're going to go to, where this story's going to go, okay? I'll give you an example of what I came up with. Oh, all of a sudden, all of a sudden that star appeared. <laughs> so, where is it? Go on, for my example here. One morning, I saw the old telephone in my lounge. Okay, that's my example for my first one, and I've used the sentence starter, one morning. One morning, I saw a old telephone in my lounge. Now, obviously, you guys can add lots more adjectives in there. I saw an old telephone in my uh, small lounge, in my tiny lounge. Uh, one morning, I awoke to see my old vintage telephone hanging on, on the mantelpiece in my lounge. Okay, add that detail. If you want to go further, add more detail into your sentences, okay? Then, and when I say add more detail, add those adjectives, make it juicy. I then said, all of a sudden, it started to ring. So I picked it up. Okay, I'm starting to paint a picture about my magic item and about maybe this journey that it's going to take me on. All of a sudden, it started to ring. So I picked it up. So this old telephone on my, in my lounge it started to ring and I picked it up. And my final sentence I put, next, I was whizzing through time and traveling to a serious underwater ship. Serious? I don't think Mr. Bates meant, I think that's an autocorrect. <laughs> but traveling to a serious underwater ship, it was serious. I think that was meant to say a curious underwater ship or a mysterious underwater ship. Um, but I really like that anyway. Next, I was whizzing through time. So again, I've used the uh, sentence starter next to add more detail in, to create three different sentences that tells me bits about where my story could be going. Like I said, refer back to those word maps that you made last week and the week before. If you did miss these lessons, do not panic at all. They are all up on uh, YouTube. The live lessons are on demand, are all up on there, live. Um, the Shed School 180121, if you type that into the uh, search bar, you will find it. Obviously, once you're there, click on that subscribe button for the Shed School and you'll get inundated with all the videos that have been posted and I will obviously let you know when we are live again. So do have a little look over there. And if you wanted to, the Summer Shed School, do have a little look through all those on-demand lessons. I go into detail about uh, nouns and adjectives to break it down a little bit further to give you a better understanding of those juicy words that we can use in our writing. So that's today's example, that's today's lesson. I'd like you to come up with three sentences about your story, about this magic item, and focus on using a range of sentence starters. Excellent. So, what have we learned today? Well, when starting sentences, think about being imaginative. Try to avoid the I did this and I did that. It was nice. And then, 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 man, man, man. Try to expand your vocabulary. Use those different words. Like I always say, I'm not worried about you spelling them right. I'm more worried about you trying to use more exciting words. Try not to repeat yourself as well. So try not to say, uh, I went to a cool house. It was really cool. We had some cool friends. We think this is cool, okay? We try not to repeat yourself because it gets boring. Same as with our sentence starters. Don't say, on Monday, I had a party. On Monday, we had fun. On Monday, it was great. On Monday, on Monday, Okay, so try and use a range of sentence starters for me today. Give it a go. Let me know how you get on. Please do share your work with me in the shed. I want to see these sentences that you have created. Don't create them to put them in the bin. Take a photo, send it to me. Mums and dads, whoop, hello, quick photo, send it to me in the shed. You never know, I might share your work on Instagram this week. Sharing it with everybody else. Lovely examples of work. 
should be appreciated and be proud of and therefore they get shared across the world. So do send me your work. Do let me know. That is kind of like our wow wall. We had a wow wall before and that is our wow wall. Instagram is now our wow wall. So do send it in and you never know, your work could feature on the Instagram wow wall. Yes, I love that, love it, love it. Right, um, remember, you can share via Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and if you're on YouTube, do like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe, man. Uh, awesome. So, that's your task for today, guys. Brilliant stuff. You guys have absolutely rocked the pants off for that one. You're fucking it up. You're fucking it down. You're fucking it all the way around town. Sorry, I shouldn't sing. It's so bad. I shouldn't sing. Excellent. Thank you, guys, so much for joining us today. Um, awesome. Right. Of course, it's time for the one and only. It's the man himself. And he's going to want to know what you guys have learned today. Uh, watch out, Mr. iPad. You're going to get knocked off here. It is, of course, it is Mr. Monkey. Mr. Monkey, how are you, buddy? Come on out then, mate. Come here, then. Come here, then. What's the matter? What's the matter? You're cold. Oh, Mr. Monkey's cold. Mate, it is freezing. It is freezing. What? Yeah, I know. Your tail's going all cold, isn't it? What's happened to your tail there, mate? What? It's frozen. It looks all right to me. Take a closer look. All right, I'll have a closer look then. It looks fine. It looks fine. It's not frozen at all. Oh, Mr. Monkey! Mr. Monkey, you okay? Mr. Monkey! Oh no, boys and girls, look! It was so frozen, snapped off! <laughs> Mr. Monkey is okay, don't panic, Mr. Monkey, it's fine! Mr. Monkey, it's fine! It's fine, it's fine, don't worry, uh, you know what, I can fix this. I can fix it, I'll fix it for you now, yeah, yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Look, I'll tell you what, look, I'll put it on there, okay, look, don't worry! Don't worry, it's okay, oh, don't worry, it's fine. Look, I've got it here, here you go. Look. It can just go. It can go on nice and easily. Okay, just uh, let's count to three, shall we? Okay, ready? So, uh, one, two, three. Mr. Monkey, Mr. Monkey, Mr. Monkey, you okay? Mr. Monkey. Oh, phew! Ho ho ho! Thought that was. I thought you were nagging me, man. <laughs> Hey, there we go. It's fine. I know it's cold, but hey, it's going to get warm, isn't it? I know, it's going to be fine. Now, well, I'm not, I'll just get into that. So, what have we learned today? Well, we'll learn about sentence starters. What's the sentence starter? Well, that was a question, so that was good. That was a type of a sentence, but stop it. Hey, no, that was it. That was a command. Stop it. That was good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. Some, oh, let's understand. What goes at the beginning? Like things like at last or after that or uh, um, on Monday. Yeah, so they can use that in their writing. Yeah, about their magical stories, of course. Exactly. Simon Bansby knows what we're talking about, of course. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I know. That's what we need to do. So that's a little task for today to write three sentences. What do we need to remind them to do? Oh, of course. Share the work. We want to see it. Do let us know. Share the work with us here in the shed. We would love to see your work. Um, and um, that's all we've got time for for today, Mr. Monk. That's it. We've all got time for. We will see you again next Monday, 1 o'clock. We will be back, won't we, for another Key Stage 1, Key Stage 2 creative writing lesson. It's going to be awesome. I know. It's going to be so good. It's going to be fantastic. Hey, guys, have a really fun week. Whatever you get up to, make sure you do lots of learning. Stay uh, inside at the moment because it's freezing. But stay safe and stay creative, yeah? Exactly. Right, we'll see everybody later on. Have a wicked week. Remember, like, share, subscribe. Share that work with us. We want to see what you guys have been up to. We will see you next Monday. Ugh, better go fix his tail. Bye, guys. See you later. Bye, everybody. Have a wicked week. See you later. Bye.